Ooh. It is <laughs> Halloween. It is Halloween. At least when this is being released. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and we watched the new Hellraiser on Hulu. Yep, this is part two of our Halloween special. Uh, yesterday we did something a little different and did a uh, horror, if you can call it that, story reading. <laughs> yeah, if you can call it that. <laughs> um, I don't know. Check it out if you're you're interested. Yep, just getting further into the spooky mood. Uh, yeah, we watched Hellraiser, and I was gonna ask earlier how many. Have you, obviously, you've seen the first Hellraiser. Have you seen any other ones? You said there was nine, so this is the tenth one. Let me. I'm nine might not be right. Let me just quickly look up how many Hellraiser movies there are. Just to there's been a lot. There's been a ton. Like. Some of them go so crazy. Like I haven't, I've only seen the first two, but apparently one of them, they like, it's set in the future and they go to space, like <laughs> pinhead in space. That's the, every single horror franchise has to go to space. Mm -hmm. okay. Leprechaun in space, Jason in space. Uh, Michael Myers went to space, I'm sure. Okay, so there's 10. There's 10 Hellraiser movies and then this, this one would be is the, the 11th. 11th. Gotcha. <laughs> yeah, some of them are like, TV movies too, and like some of them are not even that long. Like this one's only an hour and fifteen minutes. Hellraiser Revelations is um any of them connected? Really? Do you know? So all I like, know is there any like overarching characters or like only the first two, as far as I know, are connected because the you know how in the first two Halloween movies it's like the second one takes place like immediately after yeah. the first one. It's like That's the how the deal. second one is like okay. the second one has all the same characters from the first Movies one. Movies don't just, do that anymore. Yeah. That'd be an interesting thing to see in a movie nowadays. That would be interesting. But yeah, so I, I would like to see that come back. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that would be pretty cool. Uh, Hellraiser 2 takes place directly after the events of Hellraiser 1. If you're a, a huge Hellraiser fan, I would recommend checking out the second one because the first one is a classic, you know. I guess I have to watch the second one then. You don't have to watch this one, no. to be completely honest. It, like the, if, it, if, if they even made it possible for you to watch it, it was yeah. so fucking dark. Like, legitimately, I'd say about 80% of the movie, you could not tell what the fuck was going on because it was so dark. Like it was like watching a black screen with like a subtle, like a couple subtle shadow movements at points. And then at other points it was lit up like fine. Mm -hmm. But like for the majority of it, you and I were just like, I can't even tell what's going on. And we'd have to like clarify because like you just see shadows like stumbling around in the dark. <laughs> yeah. Well, which is crazy to me that they decided to just make this a streaming release. Yeah. You think it would have been way easier to see if it was in a theater. We also, it was, it was so bad. I don't know. What do you think? It, I guess maybe like, all right, <laughs> like fucking get like HDR, like the blackest of black color. Yeah. Like you could you have an could OLED have, TV. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Maybe that would work. I don't know. But we, we literally changed like the, the TV setting. settings. Yeah. yeah to the, try. Because like, we're like, maybe it's like something with the TV, but no. No, it was so fucking dark. Of course, it's always cool to see the hell, like the demon guys. Yeah, yeah. They were the best part. But if you could even tell, like there were so many times that you just couldn't even see them because yeah. it was just so dark. <laughs> like, so, yeah, exactly. Uh, there was one gore part that I thought was kind of wild when like that guy's skin got peeled off, like when his hand got like. Oh, yeah. The boyfriends. I also thought the one scene with the like when Pinhead takes the pin out and puts it through her yeah. neck and there was the shot like in her throat of the needle going through. I thought that was kind of creative. They did well with Pinhead talking. I felt like he was creepy. Mm -hmm. Like I felt I like they, I do like how like they they never really ever explain anything, which even mm -hmm. though it wasn't a great movie, I like I can always respect that instead of explaining everything to us. It's just like, what the hell? I guess we do know where. That one guy goes at the end. But yeah, it's it's like kind of all cryptic. Just like, oh, this stuff is like otherworldly, way beyond our comprehension. Mm -hmm, that is cool. Like all of the parts with the Cenobites, Cenobites, right? Is that what they said? Cenobites? Cenobites, yeah. All the parts with Something them like that. were really cool. But then again, like I just keep saying it was so fucking dark. But other than that, the characters were so unlikable. Yeah. Also, we, we talked about this a lot too, like 
So the whole point is they have to solve the box puzzle. Mm-hmm, the puzzle box. Could have just fucking thrown it away, man. They could have just thrown it away. But then maybe the demons would have kept following her around, I guess. But yeah, they could follow her around, but they can't do anything because you never cut her hand. Yeah. So I... you just see demons all the time. You'd be like, hey, what's up, guys? Because <laughs> <laughs> she was trying to get her brother back, which could be a reason she didn't throw it away. Yeah, but also, how dumb do you have to be to watch all that and be like, I bet I could get my brother back. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Like, well, I think I can do something Like about summoning this. hell's demons and watching people's getting skin ripped off? That was probably a force that could get my brother back and have no other repercussions. I think my chances are pretty good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, might as well go for it, you know? Make every, don't make any shots you don't take. <laughs> True. Yeah, just the M movie. Yeah. I liked the uh the metaphor for like addiction though and like her her character going through being an addict, I guess. Yeah. Because I don't know, the direct quote was something at the end like when she decides to not make the deal with him and she's like I've seen your reward and that it's not super awesome i guess and i feel like that's can be mirrored with like doing drugs i guess like yeah hmm. i didn't it, think of it like that like her like you the like the, the, metaphor, false. the metaphor of the box was her getting over her drug addiction mm-hmm. she couldn't stop killing people and then she's like hmm, maybe it's not good <laughs> <laughs> true I was thinking they had the fucking saw thing at the end where the old owner that you saw at the beginning comes out and he's like, I've been here the whole time. And then he's like, you were working with them all along. (laughs) 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 Yeah, true. It's like, oh my God. (laughs) Um, One of the things that I thought this movie gets right though, that the other ones don't is like, how the puzzle box actually functions and moves. Like it actually seems like it's a functional puzzle box almost. In all the other movies, it's just, they show like a couple shots of them like turning it and then like suddenly it look, it's in this crazy configuration. And it's like, there's no way that actually like, there's no way you got it to actually look like that. But I thought they they did a good job of like showing the box actually transform. I have to rewatch the first one, honestly. I like don't remember anything from it. Do they finish the box? Like, is it the same rules? Yeah, so the first one is about this guy who has exhausted every pleasure in the world and he gets this creepy looking box and says that if he's able to open it, he'll receive the best pleasures imaginable mm-hmm. and then he opens it and then the xeno cenobites take him doesn't it take like a super super long time for them to come in the first one yeah and then it's like towards the end really only isn't it uh, yeah well and then and at the beginning a little bit yeah oh, god it's been so long I well because it. it's about the so then the brother of the guy that opened the box his family moves in and it turns out that his wife was actually cheating on him with the brother that opened the box. Oh my and so God. the like room that he opened the box in is haunted. And so she has to like lead men into that room and kill them. And through the blood of the people that she's sacrificing, it like brings her lover back to life, I guess. Hmm. So that's kind of the horror of that one is, they're cool. like leading people back to bring this other guy back to life. And then then they open the box and Pinhead gets crazy. Pinhead, damn. I like the Pinhead in this one. Yeah. Less leather. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this one, it's always different when the original actor can't isn't coming really, back yeah. for it, you know? And I thought it was a good portrayal. Yeah, I thought so too. I think that if you're like... I agree. I would not recommend watching this movie, but if you were... If you want to watch some cool, gory stuff and see this, whatever they're called, the demon dudes and that's what you want to see, the Cenobites, then watch it. It's like 90% of all horror movies, right? It's like, if you like the franchise and you want to see this specific character killing somebody, (laughs) go watch it. Otherwise, just watch the first one. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, true. (laughs) That's a good point. 
it followed the exact same fucking formula as the movie we just watched and you should listen to our episode on it smile where like they get cursed by something and then they have to backtrack and find out the history of what's going on and suddenly it catches up to them that's a good point i didn't think about that i think i like smile more though smile was definitely better I think I'd rewatch Smile over this movie. Yeah, I probably wouldn't rewatch this one. No. I would just w- rather watch the first one. Yep. Because the first one is actually well lit and you can see it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the first one has... I can't believe nobody was like, hey, guys, like... Okay, I will I will say when, like, the rooms are shifting, that was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, but sorry. That's what I was saying. Like, I can't believe nobody fucking, like, anywhere along the line was like, maybe we should, like, ri- raise the brightness a little, guys. So, or maybe that filters a little too much. <laughs> <laughs> one of the things that I learned was one of the ways that you like shoot a horror movie is with a lot of light. You light up the set a lot and then you turn down the exposure in the camera and that makes it look darker. So like mm. that's why the nighttime scenes in Nope look so good because I'm pretty sure they filmed them during the day. Really? Yeah, I, they didn't do something as simple as turning down the exposure, but there was a bunch of stuff that they had to do. But most of the nighttime scenes in Nope were shot during the day. And that's why the nighttime shots look so fucking good in that movie. Hmm. So the the key is to actually shoot with a lot of light and then you bring it down from there, which I think that in this movie, they just did it all in the dark. They're like, we're not gonna use any light. (laughs) They're like ambitious, but uh, didn't, didn't pan out the way you wanted it. Mm -mm. But I I will say I did like seeing, as a Hellraiser fan, I did like seeing a modern, high-budget version. I agree. Because although the the practical effects are really cool in the original, like, it it is a little dated. Yeah. So it was cool to see, like, the modernized version of it. Yeah, the effects on this one were effective. The gore was good. Mm Mm-hmm. (laughs) <laughs> i think the best part of the movie was like the last 10 seconds where you get to see the Z- xenite cenobite cenobite god the cenobite um creation mm-hmm. the uh it, you get to see that in the second one too this guy yeah. is like trying to become one of them that's cool mm-hmm. yeah i like that and then in the second one too they spend a lot of time in that their actual like hell realm running around I just think of the Rick and Morty episode. (laughs) What's the Rick and Morty episode? Remember where they all hang out with Jerry? Because Jerry brings so much pain around to everybody. (laughs) Oh, yeah, I do remember that. And, like, Jerry thinks that they all really like him. (laughs) Yep, yeah, I do remember that. (laughs) There's some banger Rick and Morty episodes. I think I'm just not smart enough to understand Rick and Morty. (laughs) Yeah, it is a very complex show. (laughs) (laughs) A lot of the jokes just fly over my head. As they should. <laughs> I thought the, also talking about the effects, I thought that the, when the guy, the the, the old villain guy got the, the contraption taken out of his chest and his like body coming back, I thought that looked really cool. Yeah. The healing factor. I want to see some of that on Wolverine. I want to see Wolverine get decimated in the MCU and have to rebuild himself like that. <laughs> we'll see it in a uh, Deadpool. No yeah. way we're seeing it in the MCU. Yeah, true. Well, Deadpool is technically in the MCU. No. Oh yeah, you're right. I guess it is. Mm-hmm. Huh. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. We'll see how that goes. We always come back to <laughs> fucking talking about superheroes <laughs> and shit. Superheroes and shit, as always. <laughs> Hellraiser, remember Wolverine? (laughs) Well, that's what it made me think of, okay? (laughs) And then I even wrote to, at the end, when the guy becomes a Cenobite, Cenobite, he becomes the Joker. They, like, (laughs) rip his face to the side. I was like, "Hmm, he's the Joker now. (laughs) Yes. Speaking of which, dude, that fucking video video you sent me last night of, um... Gotha or what was the last one? Arkham Knight. Arkham Knight, yeah. Yeah, Arkham Knight versus the new Gotham Knights. Oh my god, that was embarrassing. How <laughs> it was bad it was. So bad. It was like wow. Was it like nine years apart? It said. 
I think so. And the graphics are just on the fucking co- like destructible. I like just the environment, the physics are just none. And <laughs> yeah, like Batgirl was driving on the cycle, and the cars were messing her up. Yeah, like, that just did not look fun. I think and I, the traversal. Yeah, the traversal looked so boring. It was like I, click a button. And and when I first played Arkham Knight, I'll say the fucking Batmobile kind of pissed me off because I was like, I want to fight fucking all these Batman villains on foot, you know, mm-hmm. like fucking combo them. But then now, like in hindsight, it's like, you know, they did flesh that out pretty well. Like, yeah, no. Even like even you may not like it. And I still wouldn't say I like it that much, but I can't deny it's not like bad. <laughs> you know, no, it, it's done well. Mm-hmm. I, I actually did replay all the Arkham games. I've never recently. played City. Really? I've played Arkham Asylum and I've played Arkham Knight, but I've never played City. City is definitely the best one, one of the best Batman yeah. stories ever. I know, bro. <laughs> I think about it. Well, after seeing that, I'm like, damn. Anytime you see anything of Batman, you're like, oh, shit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so cool. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> well, I will say with Arkham Knight, revisiting it, there is way too much fucking Batmobile. Yeah. Like it And also the story is pretty kinda lame, I remember. It's like very obvious that it's Red Hood from the gecko. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> so. No, it is very obvious that it's Red Hood. And the Arkham Knight as a villain is so lame. He's so pouty and mm-hmm. fucking lame. It's like wasn't that the appeal of like City and Arkham Asylum is like it's all the villains. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, you know how we didn't reference Jason Todd in either of the games? Well, here you go. This is him. <laughs> but yeah, Gotham Knights looks terrible. I thought that the traversal, that, that's what really stood out to me, where it was her like grappling around. And yeah. it was literally just like one button click. And then they cut to so bad. Batman gliding and you can like do all this intricate shit mm-hmm. and then and it looks good and your cape's flowing in the wind like the rain's like slicking off your cape and then in Gotham Knights you choose Nightwing and fly around on the Fortnite glider <laughs> yeah or the fucking Red Hood like magic step yeah yeah that's a good I forgot about that yeah I know that's so bad or I think Damien has like he's like I've I've hacked into the watchtower teleporter and I use that to teleport around. And you're like, okay. (laughs) Why couldn't you all just fly around or like have like Nightwing, like trapeze around, you know, like he's like Assassin's Creed. That's also like way too much to do. Like tackling like four characters. Yeah, there's once was just way too much. There's no way that any of them are going to be fleshed out. Mm -mm. They're all just going to be. A fourth of a, of a whole. <laughs> I do really want to play the Suicide Squad game. I hope that's good. It will. I, I hope it, it will be. I, it, it looks like it has promise. It is It is also from Rocksteady. Mm, so, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Fuck yeah. And it like I'm pretty sure it was supposed to come out around the same time as Gotham Knights, and then they delayed it. So I guess that's a good sign that they're working on it. Is anything coming out in November? God of War. Hell yes. God of War. <laughs> Damn, do I have to play the first one? Yes, you do have to play the first Should one. Should we record God of War and Resident Evil 5? That would be pretty good. <laughs> I'm not, I, I, I need someone to play God of War with, but I don't think I'll finish it on my own. I'll play God of War with you. But yeah. God of War is so good. The story oh, gets you. Boy. Boy. <laughs> Do you think we lost listeners after we stopped talking about Hellraiser and started talking about Honestly, Gotham I feel, Knights? Honestly, I, I feel like our conversations often get more in, engaged and interesting the minute we leave the movie sometimes. No, I agree. Because this is one of those movies where I was like, yeah, it was a movie. <laughs> mm-hmm. Sometimes we're able to talk about the movie for, yeah. for a long Sometimes amount, but... Sometimes the movies are a bit more interesting, but this one was just a run of the mill, you know? hmm I think we would have had more to talk about if it was lit well. Yeah, very true. Like, that is the main takeaway from this movie, is that I couldn't see a fucking goddamn thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jesus. Right, well, I think I think that's everything I got to say. Mm-hmm. Okay, I just want to shout out 
you guys should go watch Tales of the Jedi because I hope that gets a second season. Oh, okay. <laughs> go go contribute to the viewership on that. Cameron did show me one episode. That one episode was phenomenal. <laughs> yes. It's an anthology series. There are six episodes. Just in kidding. Total. Don't support Disney. Got him. <laughs> no, but it's Star Wars. <laughs> Let someone else buy it. <laughs> No one's ever buying Star Wars. No from one's Disney. ever. Star Wars is never going to go away. It's too big. It's so too you either big. Let it die with Disney and resurrect with someone else. <laughs> I don't think Disney's going to let it die. Disney already Disney's killed not, it and they're no, trying to resurrect it. It's been dead. Disney's just kicking a dead horse. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, the last. The, the Tales of the Jedi is good. Come on. Yeah, it is good. It is good. <laughs> I hope it gets a second season. That's what I'm saying. Go watch it so that. <laughs> so that Disney gets more money. <laughs> but Star Wars. <laughs> but Star Wars. Star Wars. Yep. yep. <laughs> well, that was our Halloween special. Happy Halloween. Happy Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening, and we hope you all have a good night slash day. Mm-hmm. Bye now. Make sure you watch Under the Skin. For this episode coming up. Yes, that's our next episode on Wednesday for our sci-fi season. All right, bye. Bye.